This video described the machining of long aluminum bars that exceed the normal X travel length on the CNC mill, and also turning these same long bars that are normally too long for safe turning on the Tormac 8L lathe. Hello, I'm John Manier from AccuSlice. In the process of assembling some of our AccuSlice systems, I needed some additional of these rear support bars. This rear support bar is attached to the two guide bars, one on each end of the index table. And they maintain the spacing of the two guide bars so that this index table slides smoothly back and forth on the system. These rear support bars are constructed from an aluminum bar 26 and a half inches long by 5 8 inch in diameter. There are two 0.73 inch diameter or 12 millimeter holes, one in each end of the bar. These holes are needed to attach the two 12 millimeter guide bars, one in each end of the table. On the end of each of these uh, rear support bars, I've drilled and tapped a number 1032 screw hole, then inserted a 1032 set screw. And a set screw is used to permanently attach this 12 millimeter guide bar to the rear support bar. That holds it permanently in place. The dimension and spacing of these two holes is quite critical. The two holes are 0.473 inches, that's minus zero to plus two thousand of an inch, and the space between the holes is exactly 25.5 inches plus or minus two thousand of an inch. In addition, these two holes must be perfectly straight and parallel to one another. This is because this bar needs to maintain the spacing between these two guide bars on the AccuSlice system to permit this index table to slide smoothly and evenly on the guide bars. If the dimensions are not askew or not parallel, the index table will bind on the guide bars and the index table will not slide freely. The first operation involves machining the two 0.473 inch diameter holes on my Precision Matthews model PM30 MV mill, which I've modified for CNC operation. These two holes must be precisely centered on the side of the bar. In addition, the two holes must be perfectly straight and parallel to one another, and the spacing must be exactly 25.5 inches between each of the two holes. The second step will require machining on my Tormac 8L lathe. This process includes facing off the surfaces of both ends of the bars, drilling and tapping a number 1032 hole in the center of the bars, and then rounding off the edges and corners of the bars. These rear support bars are 26 and a half inches long, but the maximum X distance travel on my mill is about 20 inches, which presents a problem since I cannot machine both ends of these bars in one operation. On the lathe, whenever I machine bars over 16 inches long, the bars flip around on the lathe and cause excessive vibration on the lathe. As a result, I need to make some custom jigs and machine modifications to permit the machining of these bars. In the remainder of this video, I'll be describing some of the custom jigs I made for my mill and the modifications I made to my Tormac 8L lathe to enable the machining of both ends of these bars. Since the two 12 millimeter diameter holes on the 5 8 inch diameter rear support bar are centered 25.5 inches apart and the X travel on my mill is only 20 inches, I needed to make some modifications to the CNC mill. As shown here, I saw one of the mill vices on the far left side of the mill plate and then designed a machine a custom drilling jig which mounts on the opposite end of the mill plate. I also use a second mill vise. This vise is perfectly aligned with the first vise and is in line with the custom drilling jig. This is a close-up view of the custom drilling jig I designed and machined. The jig consists of a longer one quarter inch thick aluminum mounting plate for the jig base, a larger aluminum mounting block, and then a 12 millimeter diameter round pin extending from the top of the larger aluminum block. This jig is mounted to two holes in the mill table. The jig slightly overhangs the end of the mill table in order to obtain the 25.5 inch drilling distance between the two holes in the rear support bar. The top of the large aluminum block was machined to be perfectly even and flat with the bottom surface of the two machine vices. The 12 millimeter round alignment pin was constructed from a 12 millimeter diameter guide bar. After the first 12 millimeter hole has been drilled into the 5 8 inch diameter rear support bar, this first 12 millimeter diameter hole is then used to attach the rear support bar to the short 12 millimeter alignment pin on the custom drilling jig. Once the mill has been accurately set up, this custom drilling jig will maintain the accurate 25.5 inch spacing for the drilling of the second 12 millimeter diameter hole. This jig will also ensure that the two 12 millimeter diameter holes are perfectly straight, aligned, and parallel with one another.
To drill the first 12 millimeter hole in the end of the rear support bar, the 5 8 inch round aluminum bar is placed in two vices and aligned with a stop to set the drill position to a half an inch from the end of the bar. The custom drilling jig is turned slightly sideways so that the end of the bar is resting on the surface of the large aluminum block to clear the 12 millimeter pin. The CNC mill was custom programmed to use a pecking motion to drill the 12 millimeter holes completely through the bar. This is a completed drilling assembly of the first hole. I'm producing 36 of these rear support bars for this project, so I continue to drill the 12 millimeter holes in all the remaining bars. And this is a close-up of the drilling operation. For the drilling of the second 12 millimeter hole in the opposite end of the rear support bar, the 5 8 inch bar is again placed into the vices on the mill table, and the previously drilled 12 millimeter hole in the bar is inserted into the 12 millimeter pin in the custom drilling jig. The mill has been previously set up so that the space between the two 12 millimeter holes will be exactly 25.5 inches. The 12 millimeter pin in the custom drilling jig not only holds the correct length between the two holes in the bar, but it also keeps the alignment of two holes so that both holes will be perfectly straight and parallel to one another. As a result, I'm receiving the same result that I, that I would have received if my mill had a much larger X-travel distance. I continue drilling the holes in the remaining 35 rear support bars for this project. The 5 8 inch diameter rear support bars are 26.5 inches long. These bars extend past the outside of the left side of the case on a lathe. Normally when I turn bars this long in a Tormac 8L lathe, the rods will spin around with a whipping motion, which will cause excessive vibration of the lathe. The whipping motion becomes quite excessive when I'm turning the lathe at 2500 RPM, which I needed for this project. I typically not machine bars over 16 inches long when I'm turning 5 8 inch diameter materials. So I came up with an idea to hold the end of the bars on the outside of the Tormac lathe so they will not whip around. This is the resulting fix that I came up with for this project. It consists of three roller bearings, which were placed around the diameter of the 5 8 inch bar on the outside of the Tormac 8 lathe. The roller bearings are constructed from stainless steel bearings with a polycarbonate outer sleeve. This polycarbonate sleeve provides for a smoother operation than if I had just used stainless steel bearings. I made this assembly for one quarter inch thick plastic plate which is screwed to the outside of the left side of the lathe case. A three quarter inch diameter hole was drilled in the center of the plate to allow the bars to pass through. Holes were then drilled and tapped into the plastic plate to which the three roller bearings were then attached with a quarter inch bolt in the center of each of the roller bearings. This permits the five inch bar to pass through the plate and the three roller bearings to prevent it from whipping around. This was a temporary design to minimize the whipping action of the bars on my lathe. I'm currently working on an updated design which will use the same three roller bearings, but the roller bearings will be on adjustable arms to permit the easy adjustment for different size bars to be machined. As I develop and produce this new design, I'll produce a YouTube video on it in the near future. Here I'm demonstrating the loading of one of the bars through the roller bearings and into the collet chuck on a lathe. When the lathe was operated, the whipping action was eliminated and I was able to machine the ends of the bars with no adverse effects or excessive vibration. This temporary first design worked out quite well and I was able to machine all the ends of the rear support bars using a Tormac 8 l lathe using speeds up to 2500 RPM. I used the conversational programming feature in a Tormac PathPilot software to develop a G-code for all the machining of the ends of the rear support bars. Four separate setup programs were developed for the machining of the ends of the rear support bars. In the first step, I programmed the lathe to face off the ends of each of the bars. This eliminated all the tool marks from the cutoff operation. In the second step, I drilled a 0.159 inch diameter hole using the number 21 drill, using a pecking motion to drill one half inch into the ends of the rods. In the third step, I programmed the lathe to tap the number 1032 holes in the ends of the bars. Set screws will later be inserted into these holes. In the fourth and final steps, I rounded off the ends of the bars. Each of these steps was performed on both ends of the rear support bars. Here is the final machining of the ends of the bars. 
Step one is the facing off of the bar, using the little steps and a final step at a slower speed to get a smoother surface. Step two, I'll use a number 21 drill to drill one half inch into the end of the bar. Step three, I'll use a 1032 tap to tap the end of the bar. And in step four, we round off the ends of the bar. Here's a close-up view of the turning operation, and I did turn the cooling off here so you can better see the actual turning operations. This concludes this video in which we demonstrated some modifications of both our CNC mill and the Tormac 8L8 to enable machining of some long rear support bars for the AccuSlice index table. The custom drilling jig designed and produced for the CNC mill enabled the drilling of both ends of the 26.5 inch long bars. The resulting two holes were precisely drilled 25.5 inches apart and both holes were perfectly aligned and parallel to one another. This jig permitted the machining of materials it was much longer than a normal 20 inch X travel distance on the mill. The assembly with the three roller bearings mounted on the outside of the Tormac 8L8 case eliminate the whipping action when turning long bars at high speed. I was able to machine both ends of the 26.5 inch long rear support bars with no whipping action on the ends of the rods and no excessive vibration even when operating at 2500 RPM. As I mentioned earlier, I'm currently working on a revised roller bearing design which will encompass the three roller bearings, which will be adjustable and mounted on the side of the Tormac 8L lathe. These will enable the turning of multiple diameters of rods on the lathe. A video describing this new assembly will be available in the near future. Once again, thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, please give us a call or send us an email.